Hello, how you doing? Hope you're doing well. I am coming to you now with a video I've been really excited to make for the last uh, year. And that's my end of the year wrap up. I'm so excited. I read so many books this year. Um, I think uh, I originally had plans to do like a whole bunch of videos, a video about my favorite books, a video about my least favorite books, some other specific things. But I think ultimately it's going to be better to just keep it concise, keep it to one video. And uh, yeah, we're going to just jump right in. I'm going to go through um, my stats and that's going to kind of guide us through everything else. So here's my iPad with all of the info on it. Oh, I'm sorry if you hear some little like chewing noises. The puppy, I've given him a uh, new toy to distract him while I film this video. So uh, the big question overall, how many books did I read? And uh, I hit my uh, finished number yesterday. And the total books for 2021 is 100. So that's awesome. It's a nice, clean number. Uh, all the percentages that we're going to go through, basically 1% equals one book. So that's very convenient for me analyzing my reading. All right, so originally going into the year, my goal was 50 books. Uh, I switched to Storygraph probably March or April this year, and uh, I adjusted my goal to 75 at that point because uh, I was getting through them pretty quick. Uh, so whatever my goal was, I accomplished it. For page number goal, I put 40,000. That was ambitious. I didn't quite hit it. I'm at 91%, which is uh, 36,267 pages. Um, I think even if... The books I read as audiobooks, I did as um, hard copies. I still wouldn't have gotten it. So no harm, no foul. Maybe next year I'll do a lower page count goal. All right, I'm going through my Storygraph stats for this. I originally, at the beginning of the year, I started tracking things on my own through Notion. But uh, it became too much to manage. I've been doing Storygraph instead. And I still update my Goodreads, kind of. I just put what I've read. I'm not really adding reviews or anything. Anyway, I wasn't sure that I was going to hit my goal this year. But then, uh, unfortunately, the last couple of weeks, I've been sick with the, uh, the COVID. Uh, and that made me need to isolate at home over the holidays by myself, just me and the dog. So I read like five or six books the last few days because of that. But today is my last day of isolation. Very excited, starting the new year off with a bang. <laughs> anyway, I am, uh, yeah, moods. I um, don't know how accurate the moods, like kind of tracking thing is on Storygraph. I don't really find, I don't know, when you need to self-report the moods, it's a bit more, I don't know, complicated. But anyway, I'm just going to go through the big ones here. My uh, my top three moods were reflective, emotional, and adventurous. I think reflective and emotional make a lot of sense. There was a lot of literary fiction this year that I read. A lot of it was very reflective and emotional. Um, and also adventurous also makes sense because I read the entire um, Shadowhunters collection series. That was like 15 books or something. Even more than that, there's like 20 of them. But I read them pretty much all, pretty much all of them I read this year because of that reading challenge, which I still haven't posted part two of the video because I'm still halfway through the last book. I've been there for months. I had to put it down. I couldn't do it anymore, but I will be posting part two of that reading vlog eventually at some point. It's all ready to go except for my thoughts on the last book. So, all right, in terms of pacing, uh, medium paced was my uh, top with 51% medium pace. Slow pace was after that with 34% and fast pace was 15%, which I thought was really interesting too. This is also something that's self-reported on a uh, story graph, I think. I think it's based on what you enter, not based on what the community says. I found everything felt medium pace to me. I don't know. 
I'm not really a good judge of pacing, I don't think. Everything feels either slow paced or fast paced to me. So I think I just kind of defaulted everything to medium. Which I was like, well, I wasn't like super bored. So I guess it was medium pace. I'm going to get through these kind of basic stats pretty quickly. Uh, page number, the uh, under 300 and 300 to 500 categories were pretty much neck and neck all year. Um, it ended with under 300 coming out on top with 41% mostly because the last couple books I read over the last few days were shorter. I really wanted to hit the 100 books goal, uh, so I read some shorter books. Uh, for 300 to 500 pages is 38%, and over 500 pages is 21%. All right, and fiction versus nonfiction. I was actually surprised by this one. Uh, fiction is 90% and nonfiction is 10%. I think I'd like to up my nonfiction next year. Um, I'd like to get it like 25% maybe at least. Uh, but that being said, I read some great nonfiction this year. I really enjoyed it. I wish I read more, but there was a lot of fiction to read too. All right, all right. Genre is a big one. Uh, contemporary was my biggest. What is that? Uh, that's 34 uh, um, contemporary. 33 for literary. Those are kind of the same, I guess. And then um, LGBTQIA plus is 31. I'm really surprised by that number too. I'm, I'd, I'm going to click through. I'm going to see what books are included in that. But I guess, yeah, most of these I would consider part of that category. Some of them not so much. Uh, after that is fantasy with 24, young adult with 18, historical with 13. I'm surprised by historical. Romance is 12. I'm also surprised by that one. 10 memoir. So I guess that's all my nonfiction was memoir. Maybe I should read some more like, kind of informative texts <laughs> next year. Sci-fi is six. Magical realism is four. That's interesting. Feminism is four. Thriller is four. Mystery is four. Essays is four. And then things get smaller after that. In terms of format, 77% of my books I read in print. Uh... Digital was 20% and audio was 3%. Um, this is a bit skewed. A lot of books that I had hard copies of, I also would get either the audiobook or the um, ebook from the library to read at the same time. The ebook, just because it's more portable and I could read it on the go easier. I also liked having the ebook to read in bed while my partner was asleep. I didn't have to turn on any lights. I could read it on my e reader. Uh, but if I owned the book, in a hard copy, that's what I put down as my format. Um, so audio especially, it was definitely more than three that I listened to audiobooks of, but um, those three, I guess, are books that I only have the audiobook for. Most read authors, obviously Cassandra Clare is number one because of that Shadowhunters challenge. That's 15 books. After that is a three-way tie, all with three books for Maggie Nelson, Samantha Shannon, and Rachel Cusk. I definitely got really into Rachel Cusk and Maggie Nelson this year. They're both kind of contemporary. Maggie Nelson more nonfiction, Rachel Cusk more fiction. Um, but Samantha Shannon I also really enjoyed. I read Priory of the Orange Tree this year, which I really loved, and uh, the last book of the uh, Bone Season series came out at the beginning of this year, and I read that as well, as well as the uh, short novella that came out as kind of a prologue to that book. Uh, there's some other authors that I read two books of, but I don't think it's worth mentioning. R.O. Kwan, one of them that she wrote was a uh, short story collection that she edited, so that doesn't really count. Then two Sally Rooney's, the new one, and her first book. Uh, Melissa Broder, I read two books by, and Ali Smith, I read two books by. All right, in terms of like reading month to month, I've been doing monthly reading updates, so it's not really a big surprise. My best month was March, where I read 13 books. And my worst was September, which where I read uh, three books, which is not a surprise to me either because work got really busy in September and October. Uh, and that's also when we got the puppy, so things slowed down there too. I ran out of time to read because we were taking care of him. My average star rating is 3.69. Most of my books I gave a four star, um, but I have 11 five stars. So that's what I'm going to talk about now is my favorite books of the year, all of my five star reads. There's 11 of them. Um, 
One thing that I find interesting is all of my five stars I read in the first half of the year. I didn't really have any five stars in the back half, and I'm not sure if I just was picking bad books or maybe I was so preoccupied with other things that I couldn't focus enough on books to really appreciate them. That's an interesting thing to think about. But anyway, here's my top books of the year. Um, this is in no particular order. These are just all of my five stars. So we have The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I really love this book. It's a fantasy book. It's really long, but I read in like two days. I think I did a reading vlog of that one. Um, I really loved it. Definitely worth checking out if you have even the slightest interest in fantasy. Check out Priory of the Orange Tree. Then we have In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. This is a memoir, but it's really playing with genre in this book. It's about an abusive relationship, but the way that genre is explored and like conventions and tropes are applied to this relationship is so interesting. It's so beautifully written. Um, I'm not holding up physical copies, by the way, because most of my favorite books of the year I uh, have lent to friends. Then we have uh, Lie With Me by Philippe Besson, uh, translated by Molly Ringwald, which is interesting. I really liked this book because it really opened my eyes to the potential of autofiction. As a genre, I was very curious about it. I didn't really think too much about the potential of that genre, but now because of this book, I'm fascinated. I want to read more autofiction. Then we have The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. Uh, this was a beautiful book kind of about found family and queerness and um, responsibility. I really liked it. Obviously, more criticism has come out about this book since it came out, but um, it's I still consider it one of my favorite books of the year. It was um, beautifully written. Um Gave you a lot to think about. I'm excited to read his new book that just came out. I have it on my shelf. I just haven't read it yet. Then we have Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This is a memoir. This is about the survivor of the Stanford uh, rape case. She is a, a fantastic writer. I was um, interested just to read her story, but I found the writing of this book so beautifully beautiful. She's so talented. I can't wait to see what Chanel Miller does next because um, this memoir was fantastic. All right, then. The Archive of Alternate Endings by Lindsay Dragger. This is a small, independently published novel. I really loved this. This was really cool. It really played with format, which is something I found a kind of a trend of books that I really liked this year were books that played with format and played with genre and conventions of the novel. Um, this is a book kind of about a lot of things, but it touches on the AIDS crisis. It kind of revisits Hansel and Gretel. It talks about Haley's Comet and kind of intertwines all of these things and all these ideas into one concise narrative. And I thought it was so well done. So cool. This is a book I'm recommending to everyone. The Archive of Alternate Endings. It is um, just beautiful and stunning and like unlike anything I've ever seen before. Then another book I've been recommending to everyone is Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. This came out earlier in the year. Um, and this is such a great book about queer life and specifically trans life and how transness relates to cisness <laughs> and straight people in general. And uh, such a great book about found family and about kind of queer life in a way that doesn't like appeal to the common denominator of the straight reader. It's a book, oh, someone zooming past. It's a book ab about queer people for queer people. And I love that book. All right, then we have Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. This is her first book. I gave it five stars. I thought this one was fantastic. I liked it way better than Normal People and a bit better than um, Beautiful World, Where Are You? This story about young people kind of finding themselves and the mistakes that they make and messiness of those kind of relationships in those formative years of adulthood um, was so well done. Um, there were twists and turns. The characters make bad decisions, but you're still rooting for them. Um, 
Loved it. I loved conversations with friends. I'm so excited for the TV series. I think it comes out in 2022. All right, only a couple more. Uh, the Argonauts by Maggie Nelson. Uh, this is a uh, memoir, kind of, but there's also a lot of research in it. It's kind of like what autofiction does for fiction, this book kind of does for nonfiction. Uh, so it um, it is a memoir, but it is also very informative. A lot of research went into it, a lot of statistics and research and studies and information applying to what Maggie Nelson is talking about. And this is a book kind of all around Maggie Nelson and her partner kind of defining parenthood um, for them as queer people. And I thought that was so fantastic. It's beautifully written, so well done, so informative, definitely worth checking out The Argonauts. It's good. That was an audiobook I listened to too. All right. We have Clara and the Sun by Kazu Ishiguro. This was kind of the big literary darling of the first half of the year before Sally Rooney took over. Uh, this is all about Clara, who is an artificial intelligent, like, kind of robot, who uh, is in charge of befriending uh, a young girl. And there's kind of a mystery element to it of what kind of what is this world? Are we in the future? What's going on here? But also, it's just such a beautiful book. Clara is such an innocent and fascinating character. Being in her head is really amusing because it's kind of you're watching her learn how the world works. And as like someone who functions in the world, you know how the world works already. And seeing kind of the uh, mistakes and assumptions that Clara makes is really interesting. And the last book I have here is The Mask Falling, which I already touched on earlier. It's the latest book in the Bones season series. This is my favorite one of the series by far. This is by Samantha Shannon, by the way. Same author as um, Priory of the Orange Tree. So the only author who had two five stars this year, which is pretty impressive. Um, this book was so good. Thrilling. Twists and turns. So many twists. So many turns. Um, she really found her footing with this series, I think. And um, the world building of the Bone Season series is so complex that by the time you get to the fourth book you really have a grasp on kind of the rules of this universe so you can really have fun playing around in this world that she has created and i thought that um the mask falling was stunning read this whole series the whole series is so good it's like fantasy mixed with sci-fi mixed with i don't know what else like a whole bunch of genres every book in the series is kind of a different genre um but it's so good. This one was so good. So, uh, yeah, definitely recommend the whole Bone Season series, but especially The Mask Falling book number four was fantastic. Um, I'm going to briefly touch on my least favorites. I gave four books two stars. Also mostly read in the first half of the year, so things just got kind of neutral in the second half of the year, which is interesting. Um, I'm just going to go through these really quickly. The four books um, that were my least favorite uh, were... Actually, some of them are kind of controversial because a few of these were pretty popular on BookTube and Bookstagram. But what can you do? I didn't like them. Yes, Daddy by Jonathan Parks Ramage. I didn't like it. I thought that some of the messaging of this book was kind of dangerous to be communicating. Um, I didn't agree with what the author had to say, really, about some aspects of this story. Um, specifically what it was saying about abuse and relationships and um, how it treated some of the characters. Uh, this is not The Jess Show by Anna Carey. This one was fine. Um, it was just kind of a rehash of The Truman Show. And um, ah, that was fine. That was it. Uh, Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. This was a big disappointment for me. This book has had so much buzz for years, but I found the world that he built in this book didn't really make sense. There weren't clear rules. He didn't really know what the rules were. And I, I found it just gave me way too many questions that um, were distracting from the story itself. Uh, and then finally, controversial one probably is Fake Accounts by Lauren Euler. A lot of people loved this book. I did not. I couldn't stand it. I found the main character infuriating. Um, 
and this book really just didn't go where I wanted it to go. That's okay if you liked it. No harm, no foul. Good for you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It just wasn't for me. Anyway, I think that's my year wrap up. Goals for next year. I think I'm going to keep it at 50 books. I don't know how busy I'm going to be in 2022, but I think it'll probably be pretty busy. Um, so I'm keeping the goal low. I'm so excited for all of my statistics to reset tomorrow on January 1st and kind of start building my uh, my story graph again for the new year. Um, but yeah, let me know what your favorite and least favorite books were of the year and what your goals are for next year in the comments. I'm really excited. Uh, looking for more recommendations as always. What should I read next? And yeah, thank you so much for watching. This is my first year kind of back in the YouTube saddle. I did a whole year of monthly wrap-ups, some reading vlogs, and other book content in between. I'm not sure how I'm going to be um, using this platform in 2022. I'm going to try to keep up with the monthly wrap-ups, maybe some reading vlogs here and there. I'm just not sure what my goals are and how much time I'm going to have to commit to this, but I'm having fun, so I'm going to keep going as much as I can. Uh, also, if you follow me on Bookstagram, I'm trying to get back in the swing of things. Getting the puppy and the really busy couple of months with work really threw me off my rhythm on Bookstagram, but I'm getting back into it. So yeah, I've been having a great time making this content for you, talking about books with you, meeting all of you online has been so fun. I've had a great 2021 book-wise, social media-wise, and I can't wait to see what 2022 has in store for all of us. Um, so thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.